Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about Atomic Force Microscopy that is AFM. This is the most important characterization technique for the nanomaterial so far. By using this technique, uh, samples of any time, whether that is conductive or non-conductive or powdered or even weight samples can be characterized by this technique and the inventor of this technique got Nobel Prize for the discovery of atomic force microscopy. So what actually happens in atomic force microscopy? How do we characterize nanomaterials of different properties of different kind by using this technology? So without wasting any time, let's start the video. Before the invention of atomic force microscopy, the other techniques such as SEM, STM, TEM were used and this could only characterize conductive sample. Actually, SEM and TEM could characterize or could uh, be used for non-conductive sample as well. Sorry, for non-conductive sample as well, but only by applying a layer of some conductive material. But in atomic force microscopy we don't actually need to apply any conductive material this can this can be worked this can be used for even non conductive sample itself so these techniques have a limitation that is they cannot be used properly for non conductive sample or they cannot be used for weight sample or powder sample but all these limitations can be overcome by over uh, sorry atomic force microscopy the word is clear that is we measure the force okay f means force atomic force microscopy we measure the force between the tip and sample it is also actually a probe microscopy probe microscopy EOPY probe microscopy and in it we have already studied one that is scanning tunneling microscopy is a probe microscopy and another one is atomic force microscopy that we are going to study in probe microscopy we actually use a probe probe or we can say a tip and there is the sample and we measure some kind of a force in scanning tunneling microscopy we used tunneling current between them but in atomic force microscopy we will measure the force between them that is attractive force or repulsive force and by measuring that force we can actually characterize them and we can know the topographic information and many other information as well so what actually happens in atomic force microscopy and what are the modes of it first of all we will study about modes of use Atomic force microscopy can be operated in three different modes. They are contact mode to sorry B non-contact mode and C tapping mode tapping mode. So what actually happens in this mode and what actually happens in whole atomic force microscopy? Let's understand that by making the figure. First of all, there is a piezo scanner, a piezoelectric scanner you can say. The sample is placed on it. This is the sample. Okay. And there is the cantilever. This is a cantilever. Actually, the movement of cantilever is absorbed by a laser light. This is a laser light. And here it is a what? Photo detector. Now, the signal we get in the photo detector is transmitted in control unit. Control unit. And after that, that signal is transmitted to feedback, feedback unit. Here, from piezoelectric scanner, three electrodes will come out and they all will be connected to feedback unit. And this is, and this, from this feedback unit, 
we transfer the result and get it in display unit display unit now what are the name of this component this is tip this is tip and this is the cantilever cantilever okay this is the what piezo electric tube piezo electric tube and here it is the sample sample these are x electrode y electrode and z electrode here it is the uh, photo detector and here it is the laser light laser light okay so this is the complete figure of atomic force microscopy setup this is the complete figure of atomic force microscopy setup so the most important component of atomic force microscopy is this cantilever this cantilever is made up of silicon this cantilever is made up of silicon or silicon nitride and for silicon nitride okay this is made up of silicon or silicon nitride and this tip is scanned over the sample either uh, it will be like in this case in atomic force microscopy it will be oscillated like this okay it will be oscillated like this and we will measure the force force that is acting between the sample and the tip okay that is attractive attractive or what repulsive force or repulsive force when when sample when sample tip distance is uh, 1 to 10 nanometer then there will be attraction sorry repulsion repulsion between the tip and sample okay and when sample tip distance is 10 to 100 nanometer then there will be attraction there will be attraction between tip and sample that means as a result we are actually measuring the attraction force between the tip and sample when the tip and sample are far and we are measuring the repulsion force between tip and sample when sample and tip are very close so this is the basic concept or basic principle of atomic force microscopy we are actually dealing with the force that is acting between tip and sample that is long range attraction force and short range repulsion force okay now let's see about contact mode and then we will talk about non-contact mode and then we will study about tapping mode so first of all let me erase uh, some unnecessary part from here okay so we have already erased the unnecessary part of the figure now let us talk about contact mode first in contact mode the tip and sample distance is roughly between 1 to 10 nanometer that is they are very close to each other and due to the closeness there will be repulsive force between them there will be repulsion between them and due to the repulsion they will try to go little far now contact mode can be executed in two different ways the first one is constant constant height mode constant height mode and the second one is what constant force mode constant force mode so these are the two different ways by which contact contact mode work in constant height mode this piezoelectric scanner's height is held constant this will not move okay now in this case suppose this is the sample now sorry this is the sample now the piezo sorry the tip is like here now there is some kind of sorry there is some distance between them so there is no chance of them coming in contact now if this tip comes here obviously they will collide 
now if they collide there will be uh, a high chance of damaging the sample or tip but we cannot afford that so in this case due to the repulsion force the cantilever will be deflected and it will come up here so in this process the tip sample distance is very small but due to the repulsion force the tip and sample cannot touch each other so this is what happens in constant height mode and when this cantilever deflects the position of the laser light will change and the reflected laser light will hit the will hit the photo detector in different place right and due to which there will be a change in voltage reading and that voltage reading will help us to control the tip and sample distance and that result gets transmitted to feedback unit and we can actually display them display that and we can get the topographic information from that so this is all about contact sorry constant height now in constant force mode the spatial variation okay the spatial variation of this tube is changed is varied that means whenever they are trying to come in contact the sample with the sample will move down and the force between them the force between the tip and sample is made constant that is whenever they are coming close the sample will come down and the force is constant so this is what happens in constant force mode yes there is a benefit of constant force mode that is we can get accurate results because as they are as there is very small gap so there can not be any water molecule or air molecule or the, any intermittent force between them so we can get the accurate result but there are some limitation of it as well as in constant height mode as in constant height mode the uh, sample tip distance is very low as well as the piezoelectric scanner will not go down right so due to which in some cases this tip and sample will co can come in contact and if they come in contact there will be a high chance of damaging or damaging of sample and tip and that is very bad for us so this this mode is very good when precise measurement is required but this is very risky as well now let's talk about another mode that is non-contact mode after the contact mode it's time to see non-contact mode in non-contact mode the tip and sample distance is roughly between 10 to 100 nanometer so there will be attraction force attractive sorry attractive force acting between tip and sample what actually happens in this process is that suppose this is the sample okay now the tip and sample distance is very large so there will be attraction and this cantilever is allowed to oscillate in its natural frequency like this it will oscillate like this okay and that oscillation frequency natural frequency is denoted by omega now due to the attraction force sometimes the tip might come little little closer to the sample and during that timing there will be a repulsion force as well isn't it because if the tip sample distance is very less there will be repulsion force between tip and sample and due to which there will be a change in there will be a change in natural frequency this is the changed natural frequency okay now after the natural frequency changes we get a different signal suppose we are getting a some kind of signal by natural frequency then after the natural frequency changes the signal also changes from here and due to that signal we will get different data and due to that different data we will get different result and we can actually know the topographic information of the sample and to balance that resonant frequency this z profile this is called z profile okay that is the piezoelectric scanner moving up and down is called z profile and it will it might come down or high depending upon the condition and we will know the z profile of the diagram and due to which we can know the topographic information now this method is not that much good because as the tip sample distance is very large there is high probability that there might be some kind of 
सम काइंड ऑफ इंटरमीडिएंट इंटरमीडिएंट मटेरियल्स इंटरमीडिएंट मटेरियल लाइक वाटर भेपर राइट और एयर मॉलिक्यूल्स दैट आर नॉट नीडेड दैट कैन प्रोवाइड एडिशनल फोर्स दैट कैन प्रोवाइड एडिशनल फोर्स लाइक कोहेसिव फोर्स कोहेसिव फोर्स एंड ड्यू टू दिस एडिशनल फोर्स वी कैन नॉट एक्चुअली गेट द प्रिसाइज मेजरमेंट और प्रिसाइज आर टोपोग्राफिक इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द सैम्पल सो दिस मेथड इज नॉट दैट मच परफेक्ट नाउ if contact mode is risky non contact mode is that not that much perfect then what about sorry then what next there is tapping mode which is actually the best among the three modes now let's see about tapping mode now let's study about tapping mode the limitation of contact mode and non contact mode can be overcome in this mode so what actually happens in tapping mode and why is it better than contact mode and non contact mode let's see that suppose this is the sample we are taking the irregular sample okay irregular surface sample and the upper part of the sample is what it's called protrusion and the lower part of the sample is called depression you know that isn't it depression suppose this is the cantilever and here it is the tip now in this mode the tip is allowed to oscillate at higher frequency like this not at natural frequency but at higher frequency okay now there is a chance that sometimes the tip co might come and touch the depression part and sometimes it will touch the protrusion part and when it touches the protrusion part amplitude amplitude decreases and when it touches the depression part amplitude amplitude increases or we can say that there is a change in frequency isn't it now this different frequency the difference in frequency is sent to detector and that is sent to control unit and from which it is sent to feedback unit and by which from which to measure the to restore to restore the original original oscillation to restore the original oscillation of this cantilever this uh, piezoelectric scanner will either move down or it will move up okay so that the z profile the z profile that is high profile of the piezoelectric scanner changes that is sometime it will come down sometime it will come up so that we can restore the original oscillation and this information is stored and it is displayed in display unit so that we can know the topographic information if the piezoelectric scanner is moving up there will be protrusion and if it is moving down there will be depression so that we can measure the precise topographic information now why is it better than contact mode and non contact mode as the tip sample distance is relatively larger so there is very less chance of uh, damaging of uh, damaging of either tip or sample and this tip and sample will come and they will touch little bit only that means there is no chance of presence of any other force or there is no chance of presence of any other uh, materials like air material or water vapors right water vapor so we can get the precise and we can get the best information best topographic information from to sorry tapping mode so this is better than contact mode and non contact mode because the limitation of contact mode that is damaging of sample and tip can be overcome and the limitation of non contact mode that is presence of any other material that is intermittent materials does not affect does not have any effect in tapping mode so this is the best mode now let's see about sample requirements and informations that can be obtained from atomic force microscopy so now it's time to see the sample specification in atomic force microscopy that is what type of sample can be characterized by using atomic force microscopy either that is hard or soft or wet 
और कंडक्टिव कंडक्टिव और नॉन कंडक्टिव एनी टाइप ऑफ सैंपल कैन बी कैरेक्टराइज बाय यूजिंग एटॉमिक फोर्स माइक्रोस्कोपी दैट इज वी कैन यूज एटॉमिक फोर्स माइक्रोस्कोपी टू नो द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एनी ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ मेटेरियल्स बट द फॉर बेटर रेजुलेशन वी कैन एक्चुअली मेंटेन वैक्यूम 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 कंडीशन ओके इन वैक्यूम वी कैन गेट हायर रेजुलेशन सो दैट इन वैक्यूम वी डू नॉट हैव टू worry about any other forces any other contamination there will be no no contaminants in vacuum right and in low temperature in low temperature in low temperature we can get better resolution better resolution image okay now what are the information basic information that can be obtained basic information that can be obtained from atomic force microscopy the first information that can be obtained is what topography topography means ups and downs what does the sample looks like microscopically okay what does the sample looks like microscopically that can be known then with proper choice of cantilever and tip with proper choice of tip we can actually measure conductivity conductivity temperature temperature and this type of information of the sample as well and it is also possible to manipulate manipulate the atoms atoms of the sample manipulate the atoms of the sample that is we can actually write our name in nano size nano size name okay we can actually write our name or write anything write the or make the logo of some company in nanoscopic range that is also possible by using atomic force microscopy so this is all about atomic force microscopy i hope you understand the video and if you like the video please share this video to everybody you know and thank you for watching the video